Hey guys, how's it going? It's Target here. Welcome to the NHL 16 EASHL Beta. Obviously, this is the biggest thing right now, and I apologize that there haven't been many videos lately. For those of you that aren't aware, I actually recently became a father. That's right, July 20th, my son was born, and so I've been occupied with that a lot. Oh, there's a goal right off the bat. That didn't take long at all. So, yeah, I've been occupied with family and friends and, you know, just kind of going with that flow right now. So, it's been tough to try and get some some NHL play in but with the beta coming out it's definitely given me a little bit more of a fire anyway there's been something worth going for you know it's not like going back to NHL 15 on the 360 or putting up with NHL 15 on the one which is by far one of the most annoying things in the world um, but now the beta's out we can talk a little bit more about NHL 16 how I feel about it at this point how the game plays things like that some of the worries that I had going into it versus you know the actual result and so Let's talk about it right now. So, it's nice. It took a long time for it to get, you know, into things. Oh, there. I just missed the net. That's brutal. Uh, EA had a ton of problems getting it released. Basically, it wasn't out for PS4 until late in the day. They ended up extending the uh, the beta length because of that. Um, but also, in addition to, you know, them having problems with it on the PS4, for the Xbox, the really the only way for you to get it was by uh, going to a friend on, a fr on your friends list, somebody that's played it already, and going to their recent games, and then you could get to the download link that way. People who originally did it through Rammer's account, they they found Rammer on Xbox, and then, uh, oh, look at that move. Sick. Oh, so close, so close. Uh, found his account, and then downloaded it, and then just kind of like, uh, you know, six degrees of, of uh, separation or whatever it is, everybody eventually got there. And so I was able to enjoy it. Oh, we got a pause, of course. There's a lot of pauses here in this game. Um... But you know what? It's been it's been good so far. The action tracker is back, obviously, here as you can see. It's not as usable as the other one. That's the one thing I didn't like about 15, was what they did was they put everything behind many submenus. There were so many submenus and different things you would be doing with the triggers to change things that it just got to be just insane. And that's the same thing that they've done there. You have to go to action tracker as opposed to hitting X and having it available to you right on the right hand side. I don't understand why that scheme has changed, but so far it's changed. Now, obviously a lot of the little tidbits and features in the game are different than um, NHL, uh, you know, sorry, I shouldn't say NHL 15, but just the uh, Xbox 360 and PS3 versions. You're still gonna get that experience that you felt in terms of, you know, menus as the NHL 15 on the next gen. But, EASHL wise, gameplay, very different from OTP on NHL 15. Very, very different feel. I like it a lot better, mainly because it feels like there's more ice. That's one of the things that I felt was maybe a, a problem with, with uh, 15, was the ice space. I don't know if the ice was too small or the players were too big, but there was something wrong, and it felt like you really didn't have too many places to go, especially when you were playing OTP. Players had a problem maintaining position, they weren't able to get into good spots on the ice to make plays, you weren't able to get these awesome breakout chances. Now, a lot of that could just be because of the game mode, you know, you didn't have any goalies, so guys were playing, um, you know, a different style of hockey. But, at the same time, it's definitely different for those of you that get an opportunity to play it. So, gameplay-wise, I'm actually really enjoying it. The goal scoring is a lot more realistic. So far, it's too early to see if there's any glitch goals that are out there. Uh, NHL 15 didn't really have many glitch goals. Look at this, they pulled their goalie. And it starts. Hopefully, that's something they take out. The guy was able to pull, his, pull their own goalie. Um mid-game, which in NHL, in, the, in previous iterations of EASHL, for those that didn't play it, you couldn't pull the goalie until the, I believe the final two minutes of the game was the only time that you were allowed to do it, just to keep people from, you know, pulling the goalie and leaving it empty all game long. I mean, they did have that at some point, and people did exploit it a, a little bit. Um, hopefully that'll go away here for NHL uh, 16 ESHL. Hopefully they take away that off, uh, that, uh, that ability. Now, mind you, the only way you can play, for those of you that are confused, the only way you can play ESHL is by playing with a club, which is kind of annoying. Kind of annoying, if you ask me. I mean, I would like to be able to jump in and play with random people. Why is it that I have to play with somebody that, you know, I know? Why do I have to join that club? Which is great, you know. But you got to make sure that you have everybody on the same club. you got to join your club before you can even get in. So that's kind of silly. I know that'll probably go away. I'm hoping. I mean, if they go to launch and there's absolutely no drop-in games or, or lobbies or anything like that, that's going to be a huge blow to the series. Because that's one of the biggest things about NHL or ESHL that made it popular was your ability to really just pick it up and play with anybody you want. You know? Uh, it's, yeah, sure, Hut is great, but you can't just pick up and play with, you know, nine other random people. 
and or sorry 11 other random people and have a good game that's not that's not the way it works so uh it's nice that you can do this yes but it's also it'll be nice to see if it actually shows up in the the full game uh with that now i didn't play any goalie didn't play any goalie but from what i've heard the goaltending mechanisms and controls are a lot different um basically you will be able to be a really good goalie if you practice at it nobody's going to be able to pick it up and just play simply because there's a lot of precise movements you have to focus on and that is something that's really really tough for some people so we'll see how things go uh you know in the future i haven't had an opportunity to play like i said but soon soon i'll get that opportunity and i'll, I'll give it a shot but uh i mean let's take a look. let's talk about players at least the player builds all right so far from what i understand uh, obviously for those of you who haven't played you can't pick your height and weight all right, height and weight is determined by the build you are, I think. That's what I've heard anyway. Um, you can't really tell. You'll see enforcers are much bigger. I think they're one of the biggest guys out there. Um, but power forwards are bigger too, defensive defensemen. But playmakers, snipers, grinders, those guys are a little bit smaller. Two-way forwards are average. And you can't pick your height and weight, which I find to be a little bit silly. Why? Because that's one of the things that if you're not going to be able to change your attributes, you're not going to be able to change your speed, your acceleration, your, your shooting, your passing, things like that. That's all preset. It would be nice to have some kind of difference, you know? If, if height and weight are going to affect your speed and agility, then I want that to be at least an element that I can control and play with, right? That doesn't seem like much to ask, but apparently it is. Anyway, hopefully they change that. Maybe it's just for this version. Also, when it came to uh, editing your player, obviously this is just a, you know, a beta, so there's not going to be everything in it. Um, you can do your beards, you can change your beard color, all that fun stuff, but you cannot change your hair color or your hairstyle. You can just choose your head, can't choose your eyes, can't do anything like that. Now, they made us wanted to focus on the, the beards because that is new this year. Uh, I'm, I'm playing left wing in this game, and my guy's rocking a massive blonde beard. It's Augustus Mock, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to whip out the woolly mammoth, mammoth Brent Burns beard here and make it blonde, because it's Augustus Mock, you know, he's the blonde, blonde bombshell, right? Anyway, um, so yeah, that, that's the only thing really creative-wise for the player itself, for the skater in terms of how, his appearance. But there's a lot of different elements that they have in the game now that you didn't have before. Uh, for example, you can change your laces color. You can you can change the tape on your skates, and, or on your on your legs, as well as on, yeah, as well as your stick, and you can change the, like, different parts of your stick, the, the blade or the shaft, all the taping can be changed. Uh, you can do the spiral, uh, the snake grip, all the way up the shaft if you want. Some players do that. You can do one that's, you know, halfway up the shaft. And then you can do one that's normal, you know, just the knob. And then with the with the, the blade of the stick, you can actually get, you know, just your standard. You can get one with a little bit of toe, one with no toe. And then uh, one with, like, all, like, the entire thing covered. So it's, it's just little things like that that make the game a little bit more interesting. You can change the actual... Uh, blade holder. You can change the color of that. You can see one of those guys fighting. They're actually a different blade holder color. I changed the tape on my skates, uh, on my um, around my ankles. There, you can see how it's orange. The skates are orange, and the or sorry, the laces are orange, and the skates are blue. You can kind of see those elements in there. Just little nice editable things that just make your guy a little bit different. You know that that is cool. I like that. I like that. I'd like to see the goalies see how that goes because uh, the goalies obviously with all the pads and, and the equipment, there's a lot more opportunity there for them to be customizable so i'll have to look at that to see exactly what it's like oh here we go we're gonna get a nice little poke shot look at this and there you go there's a beauty goal just like that i am right now using a i want to say i'm using a power forward if i'm not mistaken yeah and the power forward i found to be an awesome build so far i tried the playmaker in game one uh power forward in game two and i gotta tell you the power forward is a lot of fun to play with you can hit you can deke and the best part is this game is real hockey it's got a real hockey feel you know, not like the previous iterations of ESHL. I feel like I'm really playing a game of hockey. The hits aren't unreasonable. You know, they're not ridiculous. Um, the the passes aren't insane. The shots aren't crazy. It's real hockey, and it's a bump and grind game. You know, you really have to be in the mix to score. You know, you're gonna get dirty, greasy goals. That's the way the game's gonna play. You're gonna get those dirty, greasy goals. You gotta go to the paint, get the get the rebounds, things like that. So I do like the way it plays so far. I'm really, really enjoying the game mode. Uh, I'm going to definitely be doing a lot more uh, ESHL if I can in the next coming weeks. I've had a, a number of days off here to actually kind of focus on my family and focus on my friends. And obviously my son has been a huge, huge change for me. And it is tough getting back into things. You know, I can see why um, other people might, you know, kind of back off a little bit from it. Because it is so, so time consuming. 
And it's not really that you don't have the time in the day to do it. That's not what it is. But by the time, you know, he sets, sits down for a sleep and, and everybody else is down, I want to sleep too and I want to rest. I don't really want to feel like, I don't feel like getting up and recording and uh, doing a bunch of voice, especially if he's sleeping, things like that. I mean, it's just really draining. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we can get more going here soon uh, as I get into my routine. I'm going back to work very shortly here. I took a couple weeks off of work. Uh, I'll get more into that in a Target Talks uh, game. Uh, sorry, you know, game. A Target Talks uh, video that I'm going to be doing very shortly. And, uh, yes, yeah, so it'll go over a lot of things. I took a couple questions from people, and I also want to get into, you know, sort of some family stuff, let you guys know how things went. I'll tell you the whole story about everything. Obviously, that will be exciting. So, ESHL, make sure you guys go ahead and download it. Get a chance to play it before you run out of time. August 7th is the deadline. Uh, there's a lot of fun things you can do. Get in there, practice, practice, practice. It's going to make perfect, obviously. It's a lot better than NHL 16, or 15, pardon me, in terms of its playability. I like the way it feels a lot more. I could see myself doing this quite a bit, obviously, without the player builds. That's the one thing i got to say before I sign off here is the player builds, all right? About the player builds, anyway, and the pre-built thing. Before, you only had one type of shot. You know, you had to choose either wrist shot or slap shot, and it was wrist shot for the goal or the the forwards, slap shot for the defenseman. Now you get both, and that I really, really like about it. I like having that that flexibility, and also I like that pick up and play. You know, if I want to try the grinder right away, boom, I can try the grinder right away. I can just switch it up for that game. I don't have to go and tweak them. There's another goal for me. Go and tweak them, change things around. You know, that that's a nice feature about that go quick and play. Now, I think EA could have done a better job with it. I think that what they could have had is you can you can build a player for each of those builds or save multiple builds for yourself. Say this is player one, this is my playmaker. You got It'll give his descriptors what he is, height and weight, name, all that, and save them to slots. And then when you load into the game, you could actually just launch that player that you like to use. That way you don't need to go back and change everything and rebuild them. But I can definitely see why they went with this, this, this feel so anybody can pick it up and play. And I still feel... You know, I was skeptical. I was very skeptical about this this method. Um, but having played it a little bit, I can kind of see the benefit to it. I can definitely see it. Um, it's nice. It is, it is nice. And the competitive good players still rise to the top, regardless. You just need to find a player type that balances and fits to you. And you'll have a good time. It's going to be a great year. I don't know if this is something... Oh, what a shot. I don't know if this is something that I'm going to see, you know, long term. Uh... As staying, they may get more into that customization uh, attribute a little bit further on down the road now that ESHL is back. That might be why they went with this method. They didn't have the time to do it again. Time is a big thing. That's another thing that things can happen. Goalies can skate now. They're not just, uh, once they grab that puck, they don't just stop. They can skate with the puck and move it around. Anyway, so that's where I'm going to leave this one, guys. Get in there. Try EASHL on the NHL 16 beta. Uh, as soon as you can, before you run out of time, have a lot of fun with it. Hopefully, we'll see you guys out on the ice here, okay? Until next time, I'm Target Audience, and I'll catch you guys out on the ice.